Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar, Part 2, Developing Dynamic HMI SCADA Projects with Speed and Precision. This is the uh, second in our Design Like a Pro series. My name is Don Pearson. I'll serve as the moderator for today. I also serve as Chief Strategy Officer with Inductive Automation Software. Just a, uh, a brief background in terms of where we uh, came from as a company. We started in 2003. We really were pioneers in database-centric web-launched HMI and SCADA systems. We're in over 60 countries now. We're in a variety of industries. You can see a number of them just on your screen in front of you. Additionally, last year, inductive automation was recognized by Oracle and Automation World for Innovation. Oracle's Duke's Choice Award was awarded for innovative use of Java in the industrial software industry. And Automation World Reader's Choice Award was awarded for innovation in SCADA information management. We're very, very committed to innovation and very pleased to have received those awards this year. Just a brief introduction to what is Ignition. It's a web managed platform with web launch clients, web launch designer. And if you think about it, what can it do? HMI SCADA, MES functionality, storing functionality using any SQL database, business applications, recipes and batch management functionality, practically anything that you can imagine it can do. What makes it special and why it might be important to you, it's sold by the server, which means unlimited free web launch clients, uh, free concurrent web launch designers, free data points, database connections to any SQL database, free unlimited screens, free projects per server, and you know, free scalability, OPC UA server and drivers, it's totally cross-platform, Windows 32 and 64-bit Linux and OS X. The Design Like a Pro series, we actually hear quite often from our customers about how they're using Ignition and they're doing very great creative projects with it. They're increasing productivity, getting great results in their organizations. And part of our mission is to offer the Ignition community the tools and support it needs to design great projects. And that's why we're offering this three-part series of webinars and white papers. And you can see, you know, we did part one already that's laying the foundation for successful HMI state of projects. And now we're going into part two today. Just a little bit of um, review and reminder of those of you who are in the first one. In part one, in case you missed it, we covered uh, project planning phase, three major project development phases, questions you must ask to define your project, what makes up a solid project architecture, and how to create a plan of action. If you did miss it, you can go to the resources section of our website, and you can watch part one. And there's also a uh, downloadable paper that goes along with that. As we look at part two, in this webinar, we'll be covering important time-saving tips so you can develop dynamic HMI SCADA projects and do it with speed and with precision. Looking at it, what we see as the biggest challenges in developing a project is to avoid getting lost in endless and tedious development tasks. And here are some things that we'll cover today to help you develop projects more efficiently. Number one, the advantages of developing component templates and how to use them. Number two, what a user-defined types or UVT is and why you should use them. Number three, the power of using component templates and UDTs together and number four, what are parameterized windows and where to use them on your project. Um, and if you haven't done so already, you can go to the resources section of our website to download a companion white paper for this webinar and give you more information, how to save time, and how to handle the frustrations with developing HMI stated projects. I just want to make a comment about, um, just about Ignition here. It is true that the information we'll cover in this series can easily be applied to your project and development process, no matter what SCADA software you are using. Important principles regardless. But Ignition is designed specifically to empower you to design great projects, do it quickly, in an environment that's really user-friendly. It's created to alleviate specific pain points that can impede the progress of your project, and it's full-featured HMI SCADA MES software. It's equipped with a full range of powerful time-saving development tools, some of which you'll see being used today. And really, I think if you, if you get down to it with unlimited tags, clients, connections, free concurrent designers, powerful object-oriented design environment, Ignition is a software 
that is designed to help you design great projects. The goal we have is to give you the power to stop wasting precious development time doing tedious repetitive tasks so you can spend more time making your projects great. With that as a background, I want to get us into today's presentation. <clears throat> First, I'll introduce uh, Travis Cox. He's Director of Training and Support Services. And he's been teaching uh, our training courses since the very beginning. He's trained hundreds of people. So Travis, could you just say something about your training courses and a little introduction of yourself? Hello, everybody. Yeah, again, my name is Travis Cox. I am the uh, Director of Training and Support Services. And uh, I've been with the company since the beginning. I've trained hundreds of people on the Ignition platform. And we offer a variety of different training classes. One that it covers the uh, the core basics of Ignition. That's a five-day class. We also have a three-day advanced course. And we um, also have a course on our MES suite of modules for OEE and downtime. So just kind of give you a little background there. Great. Thanks, Travis. And then, Kevin, I'm going to introduce you, let you introduce yourself, and then you're going to take over from here. But uh, Kevin is our lead, des uh, lead design support engineer in design services department. Design Services provides expert consulting for designing and implementing Ignition HMI SCADA projects. So, Kevin, as you take over, just maybe introduce yourself a little bit and say just a bit about your team at Design Services and what you do. Sure. Thanks, Don. Our team over here at Design Services uh, with Inductive Automation, uh, we, we do quite a range of things, um, but our main activity is just helping customers accomplish whatever they need to do with their projects. Um, I won't go into too many details there, but uh, pretty much if uh, someone has a problem or, or needs some help with one of their projects or wants some database design or project design, uh, we help out with that. Um, I'll get started here uh, on some of the meat and potatoes of this presentation. Uh, we've got three major project development phases. And this is kind of review. And the way of review, there are three main phases in the development process of an HMI SCADA project. Um, project phase one is planning. And our last webinar went over that some. Um, proper planning is vital to your project because it lays the foundation for your project success. That's really true. If you want to get some more information about this, you can go back to our last webinar. You can take a look at our first white paper on this subject and it has a lot of good information in there. Um, the second phase here, design, is kind of what we're focusing on in this webinar. And it's uh, the design phase is where all the pieces of the project are assembled. Uh, and it really makes a big difference for your speed and um, staying on budget with the project, too, um, how well your design phase goes. Um, project phase three, startup, uh, to finish your project, you must test and secure it so that it's a success from day one. And it really makes, you know, th th that's going to be the focus of the third webinar because uh, it it's really an important piece here, too. Um, so we've been using an example project. Uh, this is Widgets Unlimited. Uh, and we're using Widgets Unlimited for all three of our webinars in our series here. Our sample project is from a manufacturing company. And it makes widgets. <laughs> And uh, let's say Widgets Unlimited called us and wants to use Ignition to help them make their manual process automated. So we'll focus here a little bit more on the project phase two, uh, since that's what this webinar is about. Uh, there are four main steps in the design phase. Step one is setup. Before you can begin designing your project, you need to establish all necessary connections in your design environment. Step two is layout. Before you start on all the components of your project, it's important to design the project's overall framework and navigation scheme. Step three, templates. To design a project efficiently, it's important to create consistent templates and user-defined types to expedite development work. We'll be demoing a few of those in a few minutes here. And for development, the last step is to assemble and link together all components and screens that make up the project. And you know, some of this is pretty straightforward and a little bit elementary, but uh, we'll be showing you some tricks to uh, save some time here. So step one, we've got setup. Before you can design anything, you have to set up the design environment. Uh, in this webinar series, 
will be using Ignition. I've mentioned it a couple of times here, but this stuff really applies to just about any design software that you're using. Uh, you don't have to be using Ignition. Ignition has some features that give you a little bit of uh, extra oomph, you know, that, that, that let you really design with a lot of speed, but some of the other HMI SCADA software projects uh, um, packages out there also have some of the same features. Um, and uh, we obviously like our software and <laughs> going to promote it, but, but this is really universal stuff. Um, so continuing with step one here, uh, in the last webinar we covered information on how to uh, set up the design environment in Ignition. Download the last webinar if you need more information, as I said earlier. Here are a few tips to keep in mind when setting up the design environment. You, it's a good idea to keep a connection checklist uh, so that you have information for all the connections to your PLCs and databases. Um, tag organization, it makes a lot of sense to create a logical organization in your tag, um, either on your PLC or in your SCADA software or in both. Um, and defining databases, it's, it's a good idea to really set up a, a database schema if you're going to be doing any more advanced database work. Step two here is layout. Um, using the project architecture we created in the planning phase, it's possible to lay out the basic framework of the project. We covered the navigation in our last webinar, but here are some basic tips to create an effective navigation scheme. Consistency. Uh, you can keep the organization placement and display method for all the links in the same place on each page so users really have something to refer to and, and something to ground them as they go through the project and navigate through the different sections. Organization. Organize the screens of your navigation according to the importance and frequency of use in the project. So the most used screens would probably go first. The uh, set points and admin screens would probably be um, either in a drop-down menu or the last item there. Um, placement, make sure that, make sure project users are never lost. Um, put your project navigation in a location that's easy to use. You know, you can put it on the left, you can put it on the top. Um, we've got some uh, demo projects that you can download uh, that demonstrate that pretty well. Um, and display method, whether you use text links, buttons, or tabs, make sure to keep it subtle and consistent. And I'm going to pass this over to Travis now, who's going to talk a little bit about templates and um, show a few things here. Thank you, Kevin. In today's webinar, our main focus is to show you how you can create HMI SCADA projects with speed, precision, and to make that project easier to modify or change later on. And the way to do this is to make use of templates. Templates are a powerful time-saving tool because they allow you to design something in one location and reuse it over and over again. There are different types of templates that are out there. We have UDT templates, which are user-defined types for the, the structure of tags that come from the PLC. We have visual or component templates for things, for visual elements that you want to reuse over and over again. We also have parameterized or pop-up windows that you can make a detailed window for your tanks and motors, or you define that detail window in one place, and you can reuse it over and over again. It saves you from having to copy and paste, search and replace. Almost every project out there has repetition, in that it has 100, ta 100 tanks or 100 motors, and they're all the same. So the basic rule that you want to follow for templates is never do the same thing twice. If you find yourself doing copying and pasting and doing the same thing over again, well, you might as well take the time to make a template because it's going to help you save time later on when you're making changes to the project. Now, if you remember from going back to webinar one, we focused on the, the, doing the groundwork, you know, getting the navigation structure set up and getting connected to the PLCs and to the databases. Now that we have that, we can start focusing on creating the screen and actually getting that project off and running. So this is the project that we started, that we started with that has some basic navigation going. We're going to build on to this with the use of templates. And the first template that we're going to play with today is user-defined data types. Basically, again, UDT is like a template for the structure of data coming from the PLC. You can, just, you can define this UDT 
and make multiple instances of the UDT, where if you ever had to add a tag to that, that data type later on, you can go ahead and do it one place. All, a lot of PLCs have the same notion, like control logics has a user-defined type, and we can use that same exact UDT inside of our HMI SCADA project. Now I'm going to show you a couple of demonstrations of UDTs, and we're going to do that in Ignition. Again, this could apply to some other HMI SCADA applications that are out there, but we're just using Ignition for the demonstration purposes. So if I was, not, since I'm connected in this project to my PLC, I can open up the browser and I can go to my control logics, which is my main PLC, and I can browse the structure. I can see that I have, you know, here four motors, M1 to M4, and they're all exactly the same. I have AMP, HOA, run command status. Or I can have, you know, four tanks that are exactly the same, where each tank has the exact same tags. So in my control logic, I already have these user-defined types set up. So I want to use the exact same user-defined type inside of Ignition. Over here in our tags database, I have already created one data type, and that's the tank data type. If I was to right-click and edit this one, you can see here is the configuration of this data type. All the tags that are part of that data type are here. So this is the structure that we want to follow for the PLC. So I can create multiple instances of this UDT that will have the exact same tags inside of them because it comes from this structure. If I want to create a new one, I can simply drag the folder, that structure from the browser, into the data types and it will ask me to create the type. I go ahead and create the type and I'm going to make this thing generic now. Right now it's pointing to motor one, but I don't want it to point directly to motor one. I want it to point to, you know, make it a structure that's very generic, point to, to nothing essentially. So I'm going to create a, uh, the, the name motor. Each of my tags inside of it, I've AMP, HOA, the run command status. Each of those are pointing to uh, a specific motor by the number here, motor one. Rather than doing the hard coded, again, I'm going to create a data type parameter. So by adding a parameter, you can use that parameter throughout the structure. I can use it for the OPC item path, which is the path to the tag in the PLC. I can use it for expressions and values throughout the structure. So I'm going to create a new one here. I'm going to call this motor number. I'll make it a string. And I can come now to each one of my tags inside of the structure, and I can replace the one with the actual motor number, so motor number. Go down here to HOA, you can replace the one with motor number, and run command, do the same thing, replace it with motor number, and status. I can replace that with motor number. So now that all, now my tags inside of the data, the UDT is, is they're generic, and it's pointing to a tag in the PLC based on the motor number. So when I create a new instance of this UDT, I get to specify what that motor number is going to be. So we'll go ahead and press OK. Now I have my motor data type over here. Now it's time to create some actual tags. So for that, I'm going to right click on my tags folder, go down, and select a data type instance where I can do a new instance of motor. Rather than doing that, I'm going to use the multi-instance wizard so I can create multiple motors at the exact same time, saving me time later on. So I can say, I want my base tag to be motor, and I want to do, you know, motor one, two, motor four, since I have four of them. My patterns, I can set the patterns one to four on both the tag name and on the motor number that I'm good, that's the parameter of that UDT, and you'll see that's going to, if I preview it, it's going to create these four tags with these values for the motor number. So if I go ahead and press OK, I see my four motors. If I expand them, we can see the values inside of them. And updating and they're pointing to their respective motor. You can and you can always check to see that it's working by expanding the tag and you can see that the OPC item path is now point for, for M2 is pointing for is pointing to the, the appropriate place in the PLC M2. Now what's really nice about the UDTs is that I can go and make changes to the structure and that would affect all of the instances. So let's say for example I want to expose a memory value to the, the structure memory tag, I'm going to add a new member, that is the motor, you know, number. That's a string. And the value here, I can use that motor number parameter pretty much throughout the entire structure. So I can use it here as well, motor number, 
and that's the value that I get from the UDT. So by adding that, that to the structure, I can press OK, and you'll see that down at the bottom, all of my instances automatically get that motor number in there for me, and you can see the value for those tags. Furthermore, if I want to log data for these tags, I can edit them, and I can go to my AMPs and my HOA, and I can come down and on the structure and say, for the AMPs, I want you to log history, go to my database and the rate at which I want to log, go to my HOA, do the exact same thing. Then every single one of my instances now at the bottom, you're going to have scroll icons to the right-hand side to allow us, that it shows us that we're storing history. So the idea is that I can define the structure one place, and I can make changes to it one place, and as soon as I make a change, it propagates down to all the instances automatically. So if I had 500 tanks or 500 motors, if I made a change in that the structure, it applies to all of the tags that throughout the rest of the project. It makes it very easy to work with. Another powerful technique that you can do with data types is you can actually embed one data type in another, or you can uh, make one data type have a parent type. So I can create a new data type here. It's called like VFD motor, for example. And I can make the parent type motor. And as soon as you make that, it brings in all the tags from the motor structure, puts it into the VFD one, and I can see that same parameter, and I can add new things to it. So I can add a new OPC tag that is the speed, for example. I can go to my PLC, come down, and see that in that main PLC I have uh, my VFDs 1 to 4, and I can go get its speed, press OK, and again, rather than putting the 1 there, I can bring in the motor number, and I can make this structure that if I make a change to the motor UDT, it's going to automatically change the VFD for the inherited parts, and I have the new things that I've added to it. Furthermore, you can go in, you can actually go to the, any of the motor tags, and I can override any parts of it. I can go and change the data type, change the item path, change the history. I can basically inherit and, and change the values of that base type. So now I have my motor and my VFD motor. And we can, again, we can put UDTs inside of UDTs, or we can do that inheritance. It makes it really easy to work with. Now, the second thing that we can do, of course, with templates, besides user-defined types, is component templates, or visual templates. And these are they're another real way you can save a lot of time, because you can reuse them over and over again. And you can also, you have the ability with a lot of systems to nest one template into another, so you can start building your, your foundation that you're going to be using for all of your projects. So let's go back to our designer and show you how we can create some templates. And you know, these are where we're going to start building our screens really fast. I already have one template created, it's called tank. And if I expand onto that, I can see here's the visual elements for that tank, and I can use that tank on my window. So once I develop this template, if I right-click, create a new template here, I can give that template a name. I can rename it to, uh, you know, template for right now. I can put whatever I want inside of it. I can put, you know, a, a tank and a label and an LED display, and I can use that onto my on my window. So I can drag the tank or the template, excuse me onto my window. Let's go back to my control window one and drag in template onto the window. I can do it multiple times. Now the idea behind the template is that I can, if I want to make a change to it, I can go back into the template and if I add another LED display or something to it, it'll automatically propagate down through all of the instances that I've used it in. Now templates give you the ability to add custom properties to the template just like you're adding properties to the UDT. So I can add a custom property that can be maybe the value, that's integer. And I can press OK. It shows up as a template pro property. I can bind, let's say I bind the tank's value to the value of the template. Then if I go back to my window, each of these templates now have a property down here for value. And I can change it to say 50 on this one. 50 on the first one, and on the second one, I can change it to 25. And you'll see that they can have different values for those properties. That's how you can change what that template's looking at going forward. 
Now, let's go ahead and make a motor template and show you how we can rapidly create this screen. So I'm going to create a new template here. I'm going to rename this to motor. And I'm going to put some stuff inside of it for the motor, like the amps, and I'll put an image of a motor that's colored. But the first thing I want to do is make sure that I have a custom property set uh, added to the template. And I can add a property called motor. And rather than using a basic data type, I can use one of our tags, our, our UDTs that we created earlier. So I can create that, use that motor UDT that I, that I used. I can then make this a drop target, and we'll see what that, that does in a few minutes. And I can then now design my, my template. So I'm going to go up here in my symbol factory and do a bring in a motor. That's the image. And I'm also going to bring in a little label right here and an LED display. And the label is going to be the is going to say amps. So each each of my elements in the UD, in the template can reference parts of the UDT. So my amps LED display, I can bind the value of that to a property which is my UDT's amps. I can then on my image, I can duplicate this and I can I can basically make a little um, kind of image tint or on, on the top of it. Or I can bind the fill paint to my property, which is the HOA, and I can do a number to color translation. If the value is zero, I can make it red. If it's a one, I can make it green. If it's two, I can blink between yellow and orange. Now, what I've done with each of these numbers is I've made them semi-transparent so that I can see through them. If I go ahead and press OK, press OK once more, I have my template created. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this. I'm going to make these two objects. I'm going to group them together. So I have one image there. And now I can use this motor on my window. And the reason I made that, I put that motor UDT as a drop target is so that I can rapidly create a screen. I have four motors created. I can drag that tag on my window. And it already knows what to do with that because I, it only has one template with that, with that uh, UDT. So I can rapidly create my screen. And there's all of my motors that I'm pointing to. Now again, if I make a change to my template, it'll affect all of the instances. One powerful technique that we can do is we can change the configuration of the template based on the configuration from the tag. Sometimes there's some minute differences between one motor and the other. And so here we can, on our, on our uh, data type, maybe I want to show a different image if the motor is slightly a slightly different one. Rather than making multiple templates, I can have still I can just keep one template and make some changes to it. First what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my motor UDT and I'm going to add a new memory tag that is called a style. And I'll make that integer. So if the value of that style, and now we have uh, each one of these motors now has a style, if the value of it's zero, I want the image to be a different one. If it's a one, I want it to be the one that we've created so far. So I'm going to make the one that we have right now visible if the style of the UDT equals one. I'm going to then bring another another symbol for a different type of motor and do my same number to color translation with it, where it's going to be looking at the HOA and it's value zero. It's going to be the red and one green and so on, yellow and orange, press OK. And so this one's going to be visible only when the style of that UDT is equal to a zero, let's say. So I've used this now on multiple different um, on the, on the screen in about four, four places here. And the style over on the tag is now going to control which image is going to be displayed. So rather than displaying this one here, if, if motor one is slightly different, I can make the style a one, which you, you can see that it changes the image for me on the fly. So you can really change the configuration of these things using the UDTs and templates together. Furthermore, though, if you did want to create another template that's uh, like motor two, and you use the exact same custom property 
where you are um, referencing the motor UDT, then I make it a drop target. I can, you know, if I put a motor on here, let's say this one and whatever else I wanted to do to it, I'm not going to hook it up here, but I can then come back to my window and drag one of these motor tags onto the window. It'll ask me now which of those two templates to create. So because we have more than one, we can choose which one we want to use. It makes it very easy when you want to create these screens. I did the same thing with the tank template, uh, where if I drag a tank template onto the window, it has, and I can then take one of my tanks in, in my line one, drag that onto the, to the template, so it's all hooked up. It has a special property called label position, which can change position of the tank 101 label. So I can go to one, which is the bottom, and two is the left, and three is the right. You can add more properties for how you want the position to be as well. Um, so you can really customize these templates by adding properties to either the template or to the UDT that you can work with and change the configuration. The last thing that's really important with templates is that you can actually embed one template into another. So I can take, create a new template here, and I can make it bigger, and I can drag the tank template into it, and I can put a motor template into it, just like that, and it's now looking at those two. So if I was to make a change to the tank or to the motor, it would automatically update the new template, which would propagate out through everywhere I used it. It's much like putting UDT inside of a UDT. So you can start seeing the power of being able to de define something in one place and reuse it over and over again. The last thing we're going to show you with this demonstration is how you can make a detailed pop-up window, which would be a parameterized window, where we can see more information about the motor, for example, or more information about the tank. Let's, let's do it with the motor. We want to be able to find more information about the motor when I double-click on the image, for example. So I'm going to go up here to my pop-up window. First, I'm going to configure the pop-up window. I want to make it, I want to make it um, you know, look what, it, look what we want. So I'm going to add to the window itself a custom property, which is much like we're adding a property to the template. That is the motor number. So that I can tell the pop-up window which motor I want to, which motor number I want to look at. And so it's down here. So I can then put, of course, if I want to put the motor template on here, I'm also going to put a simple little uh, graph up on the up over the bottom on the right-hand side, an easy chart graph here. And I'm going to now make this window indirect based on the value that we pass in. So I'm going to select my motor, and the motor UDT on it, I'm going to bind it to an indirect tag, kind of shows indirection as well, where I can select motor 1 and or any one of the motors where I can replace the, the 1 with the value that I pass into the window. That is the motor number. So now I can look at that one. Then my graph... I'm going to look at the AMPs and the HOA for the graph. And rather than looking at it hard-coded to motor 1, I'm going to um, make that indirect. So I'm going to bind my, the configuration of my graph to a little binding that allows me to modify the tag path. So I'm going to modify the tag path on both of these to what I, what I want, the value that I passed in. So I'm going to bring then the motor number on both of these and the beginning, I'm going to say motor, space, whatever that number is, and then amps on the first one, and the second one is going to be HOA. So I can make this graph indirect by using this, this thing called cell update binding on the tag pens configuration. So now I have this window that's very much indirect, or generic, and I can go back to my motor, and I say if I click on, uh, if I, I can do an event handler, if I click on that image, it's going to open up and center that pop-up window. I'm going to pass in a value. That's motor number. And the value I'm going to pass in, I can actually link to my UDT. I can say I want to use the motor number part of the UDT. So then now that I have this, I can save all this, go back to my client, and I can update my client. I can see all the stuff that I add to the window. And of course, I can click on this thing here to open up the pop-up window for more detailed information about that motor too. And I can get the graph and I can look at all the information, but I have one pop-up window for everything 
rather than having um, to copy and paste and search and replace that window. So I'm going to pass this now back over to Don uh, for review, but hopefully you guys get the, the good sense of being able to define something in one location and reuse it over and over again. Um, and, and just in quick, quick review, obviously uh, you need to design efficiently to ensure a project success. Uh, Timetables like what you saw, component templates, UDTs, and parameterized windows, they're really key being able to develop your projects and develop them quickly. Uh, Ignition gives you the tools. Uh, as Kevin said, we, we may be slightly biased because we know Ignition can give you the tools to do it uh, extremely rapidly, extremely efficiently. Um, and that's what you need for a project development time to be saved and to make your projects really turn out to be great. Uh, please take advantage of our resources section of the, uh, uh, the website for more information uh, because as was said, the Design Like a Pro series is um, and there's a third part coming up uh, at the end of April, uh, but the uh, the companion white papers and this particular presentation today will be available to you so you can review them or share them with others. Um, in fact, Travis, can you just kick to the Q and A slide now and go once more so I can announce uh, the next web the next one. Just I mentioned this, but you can note this down if you want to. On April 24th, 9 a.m. Pacific time, we'll be doing part three for Design Like a Pro series. Now we'll go back to the Q&A slide, and uh, it's over to, over to you guys to give us the questions. I'll just start with a couple of overall general questions, and then we'll dig into the ones that are, um, uh, that are ending up in the queue here. First overall, just in terms of designing, how many people can design a project condition at the same time? And Kevin, you, you work with designers. Sure, yeah. We, with the designer, you can actually have an unlimited number of people working on a project at the same time. So if you've got a design team of 10 people, all 10 people can be working on the same project, uh, work on different windows inside that project together, and then you can save it and update the project and see everything that everyone else is working on. Good, thanks. Uh, here's a question from Richard. If you make a change to an instant, does propagate back? upward to other instances? I think that was, uh, let's see, 925. That was probably sent when we were going over UDTs. Uh, yeah, so, so the UDT inside the UDT, if you switch out the, uh, the different stuff inside that UDT, the motor UDT, for example, um, the VFD UDT will automatically change to include those, uh, those new changes that you make to the motor UDT. Great, thanks. Um, Perhaps I, I think that you went over this, but in Ignition, can templates UDTs be nested in other templates or UDTs? Absolutely. Yeah. With with a template like like I showed there, we could put a template inside a template. Uh, with UDTs, we put UDTs inside of UDTs. But the UDTs actually have a little bit more um, flexibility than the templates, and that it actually inheritance as well. You can create another uh, UD, another UDT that is that derives from a previous one. And you can add stuff onto it. You can put them inside of each other. You can nest them. You can override features of the of the new UDT. It makes it very flexible. Great, great. Uh, I'm going to read this question. It's a bit long, and I'll just let either one or both of you comment on it. Um, if I'm changing the orientation of an object, it may be that the other elements of the object need to be reoriented as well. Example, I want the motor to be vertical since it is connected to an agitator in a tank. The agitator speed can no longer be below the motor because the value will appear inside of the tank. The speed needs to move to the left or to the right of the vertical motor. I only want to change the orientation in one place, not for each element of the object. And the basic question is, is this possible? It certainly is possible. Uh, say, for example, the, the image, the motor image. It has properties for the, uh, the angle, the rotation. And you could basically link that to an expression that if it's in one position, it's one angle. Another position, another angle. And you can uh, simply make things move around. You can uh, have multiple and change visibility. It's kind of however you want to to make that that one template. Um, but again, you only you want to have one template for it, not multiple, because that way it makes it much easier to work with. Great, thanks. Uh, any way to copy and paste number to color translations? Uh, right now, there there isn't a way. You you can actually. Uh, that you can actually create a default number to color translation. Uh, you can specify that in the designer so that we can, whenever time you go into it, you have some default one rather than the black and white that we were showing. That way you can start from that and always change it up a little bit. 
Now, if you were to copy and paste the component, it would automatically be come, would come across. There is a way to expand that out into uh, a, a, a one location as well using a feature we have called Style. Great. Thanks, Travis. Um, next one is there a way is there a way to pass the entire UDT directly as a parameter to pop-up windows? Why did you need to add a motor number uh, property to the UDT to use in the binding path? Question from Alex. That's a, that's a, good, that's a good question, Alex. Uh, right now we are working on, uh, since this is a, sort of a newer feature for Ignition, we're working on, on the ability to pass in the actual UDT to the window and not uh, do an indirect tag reference like I showed in the demonstration. Great. So as you can tell, I'm just reading these questions off the line and throwing them at you. So any questions you guys got, we're doing the best we can to answer them. Um, is there a theoretical tag limit? Mr. Leong has that question. That depends on your hardware. Uh, there is no actual tag limit in terms of uh, what's available, but depending on how VP your system is, it, that's going to depend on how many tags you can actually run. Your update rate makes a difference. If you're logging to a database, it makes a difference too. Um, so it says, when will this version 7.4 with templates be completely released for use in production environments? Um, I was using 7.3.4. And, and now asking about templates and when they'll be available. Right, so the, what we were demonstrating today was uh, our first release candidate of 7.4, which has the templates and UDTs, uh, where we'll probably have the, the final release, I would say, within the next you know, few weeks. Cool, thanks. This works very well with the Control Logics products, which allow you to nest UDTs. So this, I think, is just a comment that works very well in that setting, okay? Um, how to automatic and next question is how to automatically adjust the scale of template when I use it. For example, your motor templates look different um, than they do in the used screen. When you change uh, size of the template, can you have the used used components adjust automatically? So we're we're actually working on that kind of right now. Uh, the, what it does is if you change the size of the template, then it sort of uh, will shrink or, or expand the template on the screen because the, the screen size of that component will be a little bit different. Uh, we're working on maybe a, a way of, of having that propagate down automatically. Great, thanks. Um, and so just the overall, maybe you could repeat, there's a place to go to get more detailed instruction on how to use Ignition overall. And maybe, maybe perhaps you could just mention the forum or the training opportunities or stuff at this time. Sure, absolutely. I mean, there are several avenues uh, to explore to get uh, help. We have a, a really, really great user forum on our website that a lot of has a lot of activity and a lot of users that are registered for it. Uh, just inductiveautomation.com forward slash forum. You can get uh, ask questions, get answers by us, and of course by your peers. Um, that's, that's free. We have email. You can email us at supportinductiveautomation.com. Uh, you can certainly you know give us a call. Uh, there, there are just several different ways you can get answers and. Uh, we're going to be continuing to have more webinars, and there's always good good things that will come out of those, and they'll be on the website. The recorded version of will, will be on the website shortly after. Yeah, I just I just add as, a, as an overall commitment, um, not only this series here in terms of design like a pro, but also just overall, we try and make everything we do available. We save archives, make them available to you, and we're continuing to come out with white papers. And it's really based on your feedback of what you think would be valuable and where we can put our attention, both in terms of obviously software development and also in terms of the availability of uh, what gets done on the forum, what gets done on our website. So your feedback is welcome in that area. Uh, we're going to try and get to a couple more questions before we finish off our hour. Um, what is your experiences with the communication between Ignition clients and Ignition servers if it was not local internet network and it was kilometers away from each other? Mr. Uh, Sardar Perdowitz question. You want to comment on that, Kevin? Sure. Yeah. The uh, it it works well um, in either case. Uh, obviously, when it's local network, you can get really quick response times. If you're miles away, if you're going over the internet, if you're going over a VPN, the actual connection is going to be based on your connection speed. But Ignition does a really good job of scaling down. So so if you had a client that you knew was going to be running miles away from the server, kilometers away from the server, you could set up the tags that were going to run on that client to update once every second or once every two seconds or, or once every half second. Um, and you could set up the number of tags that were actually sent to that client to be just a handful. 
um, if you were having any performance issues. We find that most of the time people don't have performance issues, and even if it's a, a distance away, the network connection can still handle most screens that people build without any modifications. Great. Um, this is another question from uh, uh, Hian Leong. Uh, what kind of license do you provide? I'm, I want to. I want to mention that on the screen here that you have in front of you for our Q and A, we have Jim Meisler, Vanessa Garcia, Myron Hurtling, Shane Miller, and Raman Rafaga. Uh, Melanie Monas and Patricia Hurtley. These are our account executives and our business development folks. So I really, um, you're probably working with one or the other of them. We'll make sure that we uh, follow up and uh, get your question answered. But I, I mentioned unlimited tags, unlimited clients, licensed by the server. Those are some things. Um, our pricing is also available on our website. So you can see whatever you want to see from that. But we're happy to, to follow up with a call and uh, answer those questions very, uh, very specifically for you. And Richard, thanks for your comment. He says, I appreciate being able to view webinars on websites so I can go through them again and again. Um, we certainly uh, we want to continue to make that the case. So with, a, with a, uh, this one final question, if we don't get to all of these, we will follow up. Um, can you create a colored table so all objects share the same colors? I want to create a set of objects that will work on a black background but want them to change colors if the background changes to light gray. Any answer on that? Kevin, you want to go ahead and answer? Sure, yeah. The, uh, you can certainly store colors inside a database and then link items through, or you can set it inside a data set and then um, link items through. Uh, we've done that on some projects where, where it'll actually be stored inside a database, and then based on some parameter, it will pull in a different color combination, generate that color for the background, um, or generate that color for the different items. Um, it's all done through the property binding. Um, and a little bit of scripting. Great, thanks. So we're, we're coming to the close of, um, of today's webinar. Um, not that you guys have to, but I want to give you a chance, maybe Kevin, to any final advice uh, to, the, to the end of part two of this thing. If you have it, fine. If not, that's okay too. Sure, just uh, get out there, um, have some fun with Ignition, uh, or whatever your <laughs> it's got a, a software is, but obviously, as said a, a few times before, um, I'm a big advocate of Ignition. I think it's great. Um, but yeah, just, just get out there, play with it some, uh, play with the new features. And uh, yeah, our, our forums are always open. Uh, we have a great support team over here. And uh, we're available and we'd love to talk to you. Great. Thanks, Kevin. Travis, any final, final statements or comments from you on today's webinar? Sure. I just want to reiterate the point of, uh, I mean, the, the whole point of this webinar here uh, the demonstrations, we, we want just a small demonstration to give you an idea of what the concepts are, but the main thing is when you're developing your system, just sit down and sort of try to think of everything that, all things that are in common. And whatever, whenever you have, you're, you have things that are the same, you can generate templates, you can generate something in one location and go and, and reuse them over and over again. And if you were to do that at the beginning, I know people want to just jump into it because of time constraints and they want to just get right to and get a, get a, get a product finished for their customers to start showing them stuff. Uh, that's all good, but if you can really plan it out and sort of um, write down on paper what's going on, it's going to help you save a lot of time later on uh, with, with it when you come back to make modifications. Thanks, Travis. We'll come to the conclusion of today's webinar. I do want to say just from, just from the team uh, here at Inductive Automation that your feedback is welcome uh, from today's webinar and as we go into the future. And we, we really are committed for you to be successful. So I hope that comes across in today's presentation. I'd also encourage you to um, uh, schedule a demo and, uh, and dig in a little bit more further with your specific questions, your specific situation. And let our team here give you an opportunity to really find out how we can be of value to you. So with that, uh, thanks so much for uh, your participation today. We look forward to seeing you in April with our part three of Design Like a Pro series. Have a great afternoon.